everybody. This is Alicia, Liz, and Ann, and we are Servant Decoded. And we are back to break down and take a deep dive into the final episode of season three of Servant, titled Mama, written by Ryan Scott and directed by Ashana Shyamalan. Hoo-wee! You could have stopped at breakdown. We're here to break down. We're here to break down. Oh, wow. Well, that that ending how did you guys feel about it that's not whole... good it's oh it was th- this is the best yet this is obviously oh. i mean this season is ridiculous <clears throat> it's so incredible uh, it's almost well, like musical it's like it, uh, yeah this is my favorite season hands down by far mm-hmm. uh, yeah. season one being second favorite season mm-hmm. two being third i loved this season i i thought almost every episode was a standout it's such a good and it, it has such a good flow and resolution like the whole thing mm-hmm. like they built up everything like every episode it like built up this little like moment and then like the entire season just builds up that one big moment and it's just mm-hmm. so oh it's so well written and it really, really, and really good flow truly flow in every episode and flow throughout the episodes building mm-hmm. the play. and then it different was- and then like different little like ways of doing that like they had the tension of oh like uh, uh. <laughs> Collabor- the collaborative effort of <clears throat> writing and the directing and the visuals the you know photography the uh, <laughs> set design the sound the music like every single part of it i just think is so magnificent and and well executed and all it all comes together in such a beautiful and impressive way um and i just was firing on all five four cylinders um the costume department just which i'm glad you mentioned that because i gotta say that like dorothy's finale dresses are my favorite uh, things (laughs) that dinner dress oh it was amazing (laughs) it seemed like almost every episode especially towards the end she was wearing printed kind of muted colored dresses she wore and, a lot of prints this season. Although, I mean, she usually does. She's mm-hmm. she has a lot of prints. Um, although, you know, we've talked a little bit about her, like the clothing sort of matching the decoration Decor. of the house. Yeah, and if and and sure enough, in one scene, she was in a dress that looked just blended straight into the yellow part of their comforter. I mean, it was the same mm-hmm. tone and the, and like a you know floral pattern. And I and I just kind of chuckled since you know we've talked about that. And the color yellow, you know, running throughout the season and it kind of being Liam's color. Yellow and turquoise were really, or, you know, mm. teal or whatever you want to call it, were definitely the colors of the season, that's for sure. And blue, yeah. too, really. Blue, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I, I guess I'm going to take the opportunity to, to just kind of note that I found it interesting that the beginning of this episode mirrored the end of season two ending with uh the turners make the pact with dorothy or with leanne that you know they get to keep jericho and dorothy and sean are reveling and having jericho back they're lying on the bed kind of playing with him and dorothy's in her room talking to presumably the the corpse of aunt josephine in the wall about you know i don't know why, the, why i do these things and i feel this darkness growing inside of me cut to the lights the power goes out the lights go out in the turner house and then the lights going out one by one in the houses going down the street away from the Turner house. And then the very beginning of this episode, it starts with, you know, on a bright sunny day, coming up the street towards the Turner house in the opposite direction. I liked that touch. Yeah, that's, yeah. Their, their use of mirroring shots, um, dialogue everything really uh, yeah dialogue all of it it's so well done and 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 also just the fact that in the tv world there's always different directors and uh, the writing is a collaborative effort and so it really also in my opinion goes to show you like how skillful the collaboration is that those types of things are awesome and they're there they exist you know because people are making sure that they do even yeah, I, I, not a lot of people I think are I mean I, I think more people are now but um, still not many not a lot of people know that in television uh, there's often a different director for every episode and that a write, you know there may be an episode credited to one writer 
but it's still a collaborative effort, you know, of the writer's room and then one writer kind of being responsible for that episode. And then they've got to- To me, there's, you know, it's like when everybody can be on the same page in terms of where a season is heading of a show, it makes it exponentially better and feels so much more cohesive than a show where people don't really talk about it or haven't gone into depth or, you know. That's what I was going to say, because sometimes, like, you can tell when certain people direct things. Not that everybody doesn't have, like, a style, but, like, with this show specifically, it all feels like one thing, which is right. stupid because it's a show, but, like, <laughs> but it really does feel like one mm -hmm. solidly crafted, you know, like, exactly. story or, like, presentation of whatever this is right now. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Especially impressive for a show that's so detailed and shredded in mystery and with clues, you know, sprinkled everywhere. It's just a credit to everyone all around. Yeah. So the episode opens up pretty interestingly. We are with a realtor who's showing a home to somebody. And she mentions that it's very rare for three units to become available on Spruce Street um, and says that it's a lovely neighborhood, just a dream, which I think is being speculated as a is that possibly telling us that there's some kind of dream going on? Was this episode a dream? What's it, you know, who knows? Okay, so one of the things that I believe I've pointed out before on here, not just in my notebook of crazy notes, is that particularly throughout season one, but it, but season two as well, a lot of times the episodes open on Sean waking up. Mm. Yeah. So we, we may get a flashback, but is it a flashback or is it a dream Sean's having about what happened before? You don't really know because it opens with Sean, uh, you know, after that moment, then Sean opens his eyes. And so this is one of the first or one of the only, one of the few episodes where it opens that way with Dorothy instead of Sean. Mm -hmm. And I, I thought that was interesting as well on multiple levels. You know, one, just looking at it from the perspective of just the concept in general of what, uh, what of all of this is reality. And, but then also in the perspective of how this season, Dorothy has sort of turned into Sean in terms of being the skeptic and Sean is now blindly trusting or was blindly trusting Leanne. And also just all the talk about what if Dorothy never wakes up? So is, is the implication now that Dorothy is awake? Does she remember everything? And she's just not saying anything. Are Sean and Julia now quote unquote asleep? So I just thought there was a lot of interesting room for interpretation there. I don't know if it, I mean it seems like we're taking a sidetrack to that whole thing for now I mean at least with this episode like they're not really worried yes. about whether or not she remembers anything and she might maybe a little bit more yeah but but it seems more that they're like worried about Leanne's placement of everything and how um she's essentially taking over the whole family <laughs> Like, yeah. I guess next season we'll really get into the meat of whether or not she remembers. And I know they've been playing with it for three seasons now, but... Well, and, uh, you know, the way that she told Sean that she'd never forget that the way that he lo is looking at her and she sees him looking at her like that again, I think that's just, like, a further clue for her. To, she's kind of, like, trying to put the pieces together. Like, it's a puzzle that's mm -hmm. everywhere, and she's just trying to, like, put the pieces together so she can figure out what actually happened or what's going on. Right, she's trying to, to regain that lost time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, this was the first episode that we did not have someone uh, triggering that memory. Right. Asking her about an ambulance or you know what happened last summer. We do see that she's she has not forgotten that people have said things about Sean's you know, first appearance on Gourmet Gauntlet um, or ambulances, EMTs last summer. Because we see her pulling out an old count, or presumably she's old. She's still looking at that planner. Which does not make sense, and we can get to that later, but yeah, yeah. she's trying to piece it together. She's trying to figure out what happened to September. I, I also think there's an element of how did I let, the, how did things get so out of control? So, okay, um, we also know that she wrote down three days bed rest, and we discussed that bed rest seemed to be a bit of a strange term to use for what she's doing, because we associate bed rest with you know, when you're, uh, particularly in this case, Dorothy was on bed rest with one, you know, many, at least one of those other pregnancies that we know of, either other pregnancies or Jericho's pregnancy. Um, high risk pregnancy or an at-risk pregnancy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, and, it's, and Dorothy supposedly has written this in her own calendar. 
right. this thing is so resentful of and angered by. I I don't see her writing bed rest, bed rest, bed rest. Um, yeah, yeah, that's true. Um, Other than uh, like, if it was ordered to her by someone, do you think for, for a specific reason, like her pregnancy, that would make sense to me. But in this specific instance, I agree. Right. Um, not to mention the calendars don't match up. The calendars. Liz was right. Liz was right. And we are currently drafting a letter. Dear M. Night Shyamalan, re props department. What the fuck? Thank you. Please tell us what's going on with the calendar fuckery. Thank you. We're <laughs> decoded. <laughs> Both calendars indicate that it's 2021. That's it. Yeah, yeah. That's what we do know is that it's backwards and it doesn't make sense. Not yeah. time travel, <clears throat> time lapse makes sense. It just seems it seems like a possible production error. Yeah, but these things I, happen. Yeah, I, for for a show like Servant with people that screenshot and scrutinize to the degree that that we do. What? We don't do that. <laughs> awfully egregious mistake to make. For real. I, so I'm more inclined to believe that bed rest indicated what it sounds like, bed rest. And that it, we flash back in the beginning? Yeah, that we're seeing a fake out with the, oh, Dorothy, I had a feeling that today was they make it down, here's breakfast. Um, that when we see, you know, when we see her wake up, that it's, we're back in like 2010, 11, and looking at a day planner or a calendar from, you know, yeah. end of the year. Yeah. That's where I'm leaning. I took the guy, the move in of those people, I know, as the cult moving in and surrounding them. That's how I felt too. Like it's like, so hmm. to me, I'm like, oh, well, there are three you know, somehow three families have been ousted from their home so that the cult can move in. Right. Yeah. And yeah. So I think that, you know, we, we, at the end of last season, there was the talk about the war. And I think this is really yeah. kind of what that means is that, you know, they'll, they're infiltrating Liz, <laughs> <laughs> the street. Um, and that's their, that's their plan. And, um, Perhaps they're being directed by Uncle George, who made his <laughs> triumphant return. Most standard style. Yeah. It's good. Squeal with joy and pump my fist in the air and went, oh, He's my God. favorite. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if we should like him, but he's great. <laughs> and you guys have been, connect maybe it's you, Anne, that's been connecting Roscoe with Uncle George, what? right? Uh, uh, I forget what I said, but it made but sense no. to. I, I was dumbfounded. Yeah, that's Two amazing. Things. One, like, I knew that it's funny because weeks ago, I remember thinking, okay, I know that Uncle George is alive because we hear his voice in the trailer. I really, I missed that. I don't know how I missed things that. that. I missed that too. Saying. So I knew that he was, you know, but for some reason, I guess just having gotten ca so caught up in like the season, I, I forgot that we hadn't seen him yet and that we would like expecting that we would see him mm. so it still totally caught me off guard um in that moment i didn't i didn't see it coming so bravo it was it was just such a, an amazing moment um, and, mm -hmm. and i remember we had spoken so confidently last season about him being dead like oh he's he's dead that was oh, you know no. oh, i said he wasn't dead i said there's no way he's really? dead i I'll take yeah. a and listen. I I was sure that he was dead, but I was also pretty sure. But they didn't. Sh I mean, I don't know if they don't show people. Well, no, I'm trying to think of the other people that have died. That's like, the thing. Like, it's like so like, permanent. Like they don't really make it a point. Like some things they show you. Like look at his dead body. Now you know. Right. That's the thing. But he just disappeared. He which disappeared. Could be anything. So, but I yeah. I think I also thought he was pretty dead. I thought he disappeared. There was no ambulance. There was no nothing. Like that he's not dead. And they're magical. Just, they're all magical. They've already oh, been. And if he's already been resurrected to begin with, then how could he die? He's already yeah. not alive. That can't right. Happen. Because if that can keep happening, there's a whole other mess of things on the table. 
Yeah. Well, yeah, depending I, on what needs to be done. I'm, I have to go back and, and look at the ritual episode. I guess that's the finale, Josephine. Um, mm-hmm. In the video, though, they talk about killing the, you know, the lost soul, the lost wanderer. You have to kill them to bring them back to the fold, right? Um, I think so. Well, sort of. Basically, it's like if you kill them and if they're worthy and meant to come back then they do and otherwise they are dead right but it does involve death and resurrection listen to the music to hold you know the yeah. dagger the fire yeah yeah i mean he got hit by a car you know and again <laughs> leanne with her little jedi mind powers yeah she even talked about the fact that that vehicle likely was like that he got hit because leanne willed it to happen Right. What do y'all make of the white suit and his genuine, uh, his genuine, you know, um, come to hygiene? He doesn't look like he crawled out of a grave. No, that's what I mean. Like, not even that, but like. I thought the white was meant to symbolize purity, possibly an angel. But like, yeah. Why not? Like, why would, um, like, what happened to him in between? If, I mean, I don't know, you know, people change clothes, of course, but like, he was so disheveled and wet <laughs> well, <laughs> now was, and now he's like so he was taken care of and some brilliant redditor that i would like to give credit to connected that roscoe was visiting him in the hospital earlier this season now we know what the oh, was doing no. I was so I was so relieved to have that circle closed. I wish we got a little bit more of him because that wasn't yeah. totally but he's great. I mean yeah. trouble, but he's yeah. great. So we know Uncle George was in the hospital. So I would say that's where he got cleaned up. <laughs> but now does that mean something? Like because like you know, I don't know. I mean, I know there are some religions that, you know fall into that that like being dirty is like a part of the thing so i don't know if it's like like maybe you said he was taken care of not hiding under bridges and things like that like he said but but i do think that the white is meant to be symbolic of like goodness and purity and an angel maybe so is he is he going to be our hero i i think that's the implication god i love it i think it was meant to go okay look this is the good guy this is the good team like Roscoe, remember what remember what Roscoe said too. Roscoe said this episode. No, last season. They're you good can people. trust them. They're good people. Help right? Me. So and he was all night. Yeah. Oh. So isn't it interesting that we all kind of bought into the fact that Roscoe was just like following Leanne? Mm-hmm. And guess what? He was a double agent working for the actual good people. So I think that like when it comes to the answers to questions that you know, Roscoe saying that and then show it revealing that he's been working with Uncle George and Uncle George being all in white. I think that was a very clear um, message mm-hmm. that that's the good side. Let me ask you this then. Is that fair? Because uh, I feel like I feel like I feel like if Leanne thought Roscoe, you know, was working for her or working with them, how how would she not have foreseen that he's not? What you have he a says great he point, is. Anne. How is it that Leanne knows, seems to know some things, but others get by her? That's a great point and a great question. I don't know. I don't know either. Maybe she's playing Roscoe. It, you know, her last line to him is, I won't suffer in- injustice. Right. It could have had a double meaning. I, I don't know. I mean, yeah, she seems oblivious. She seems to believe Roscoe, but who knows? Mm-hmm. Um, I, I just can't see the lesser saints as the good guys. I know. I get that. It's the way I, it was set up from the beginning. And then like this this entire season, it was made to seem like, I mean, depending on if you like Leanne or not, I guess. Well, and the park people, the kid, like uh, Milo. They're great. Like a genuine, genuinely good person. Yeah, that's true. Wanting to and he's in trouble. Bad crowd. Mm-hmm. We're supposed to be the good guys. I I can't find my way around that. Yeah. The only thing I can think is maybe, I mean, I don't know where we're going. But we're talking like, about false idols and things like that. So Right, but also like belief and faith and things like that. So if it's like meant to be that faith is good or like believing in something, I don't know. That's maybe not the message. We have so many other things going on. But like, it would be kind of an interesting double turn to find out that like they were fine all along. It, it, yes, it, for the story, yeah. yeah. That would be mm-hmm. a, a neat thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But I'm I'm having a hard time feeling it. <laughs> Getting to that. Yeah. I can we'll see, see how we get there. Yeah. I mean, if we get there. 
we talked uh, we were talking about the production quality stuff another thing um that i thought was worth mentioning was at the beginning when we were visually traveling through the walls of the house that was so good um oh so good the sound in this episode was amazing i loved the music at the very end it was so like just and then ominous but yeah but at the beginning when we're moving through the house it almost sounds like there's a bomb ticket like a ticking bomb yeah you hear this noise it sounds like it's a bomb about to take and so there was a part of like i spent most of the episode waiting for the entire thing to collapse or blow up because of the ticking so even yeah. though i'd well, they showed that they showed a know, lot of the termite. yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly like we've talked you know in previous podcasts about what might happen and we've talked a lot about somebody dying and i'm sure you know one of us even mentioned the idea of of dorothy you know something happening to dorothy but they definitely misdirected my you know in the sense that like i was convinced the house was going to collapse and so even though the idea of dorothy having something horrendous happen to her was on the table again they misdirected me enough that i still in the end was shocked and horrified this, oh, I, oh my god I gasped and I yelled, oh my yeah. God. Yeah. Oh, I did too. I was like, oh, yeah. It was loud. It was like, holy shit. My the cover, I was like, oh my God. I had covered my Wait, eyes. Yeah. To go to go from these, yeah. When she hit everything on the way down, like she managed to bounce off of every damn she, thing mm -hmm. on her way every, down. Every every room. Oh. Every branch on I mean, the ugly. Um, so she goes to the shower and it was a, a one of a, one of those mirror shots from the first episode where she's showering and we hear like the sounds in the pipes and all that stuff. Um, also re is reminiscent of when she was in the shower and catatonic after Jericho died. So I don't know what they're getting at. I'm not entirely sure why there was so much of Dorothy in the shower this episode. Yeah, there were more. This was more than one. And, well, and that was another reason why I thought we might be seeing two different timelines. Mm -hmm. Right, exactly. Like the repetitive shots. Yeah, exactly. I agree. Mm -hmm. um, yes, the Julian line of the week, which was something to the effect of, you know, one of y'all are going to have to take it. My brain's. Uh, second <laughs> Frank, um, the next time he loses his keys or forgets a lyric to a silly dance song, we're having him, we're putting him away, we're locking him up for dementia. Yes. Yeah. So good. Oh, I love that. Love it, love it. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, Sean, there was also still continued focus on various, you know, the water, the water in the bathtub, the water in the shower, then Julian's giving her green juice. Uh, and then Leanne's making her coffee. Um, it does make me wonder if, <laughs> if it was part of like the way that Leanne was able to somehow enchant everybody else, then you would think that it would work on Dorothy. So that kind mm -hmm. of went against my theory of, I think, you know, the water's conduit she, because it certainly did not work on Dorothy. Why did it she work? Almost, she almost did though, with the job offer. Yeah, that's true. I mean, not not to your point about like liquids, but but, but she did try in other ways. And yeah. Dorothy's just well, so overwrought and I guess resistant because of that, or just resistant because she's Dorothy. Yeah. Right before that walk, when Dorothy when Leanne boops Dorothy awake, you know, boop, <laughs> wake up. Um, she says, you know, it's nine o'clock. It's a nice day. Let's go for a walk. Coffee's on the bedside. Yep. Yeah. We don't know if she drinks the coffee or not, but I, I took note of that. I also love how Leanne is really kind of mimicking Dorothy there. Mm -hmm. So I think yeah. it's great that finally Dorothy just says you can have whatever of mine that you want. My 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 brother, my husband. That Leanne is trying to be like Dorothy in so many ways, and that she's noticed, and because we've been talking about that for a while, um, but. The, yeah, the boop was funny. And and the way that she's just, you know, sleepy head and sort of giving Dorothy a dose of her own medicine, which is 
both creepy and also funny at the same time. And that weird bathtub scene. The bathtub scene. Uh, see, there's some of these things that I just feel like are so strange, but sort of point to a, a potential like theory with some very blurry edges. And that was definitely one of them. That was very, very strange. What did you guys make of the fact that Leanne was bathing Julia? Well, there's a lot of that this episode. Um, not a lot of that this episode. I don't know if it's specifically like a baptism situation. But, you know, it's just like, I I mean, I, I suppose people do that. Like, to you know, you show you care or whatever, like shower together or, you know, like have some sort of an affectionate, like non-sexual physical um, affection. <laughs> demonstration of affection for each other it just struck me as a little bit of like a strange thing and i yeah. can't picture you know julian being the type that would be that would enjoy like a sponge bath do yeah think, do you yeah. think there was like a purpose for it do you think like because like they did that and then when they had dinner they all drank the wine and that seemed very communal i mean i know they were you know tasting it and sharing with each other but they you know um, well, I do wonder, you know, I put forth that theory last year about Sergio and Julian being the same person mm -hmm. and just the way that like Leanne would rat re act with Sergio and the way that it also corresponded to her and Julian becoming close. It just felt like, um, I don't know, it felt like almost like they already knew each other, even if they didn't know they knew each other. So I just think that perhaps maybe there's still something in that theory uh, along with who is Dorothy to Julian. I like the Marino bit. I or their mother, or I, I don't know. There's just, there's, there's something weird about it. And I, I feel like I'm on, I've sort of got like pieces, but I can't quite make them fit in terms of the whole Sergio crawl space, Dorothy, Julian, mothering oh. him. Like there's just a what? lot of, well, and note that it kind of mirrored Dorothy and Jericho in the bathtub, which we'd seen prior. That's what I'm saying. So exactly. when Jericho says his first word, mama, and then we see, and they're positioned in the same way. Right. With Dorothy and Leanne both on the left and Julian wow. and Jericho on the right. And the way that Leanne is bathing Julian is, right. you know, motherly slash nurse exactly and uh, then, yeah it's not sexual and then, at all so no and then if we also think back to and she's bathing him like a babysitter might bathe their you know exactly. like yeah. a baby totally except he's a grown man you know what i mean and then we see dorothy and the kid in the bathtub and there, it was just the way they set up like the shots and the and the way they sequenced them it just felt like maybe it was supposed to be hinting at something mm. and yeah. i remember in Marino last season there was that sick woman in the bedroom and she had the the thing that the Turners have next to their TV in their living room you know where you talk to it Alexa whatever sure and there were like little clues around that where it was like hmm is there any possibility that that woman was Dorothy and Julian's mom or Julian's mom so would that be Dorothy could that potentially have been Dorothy at another point in time so there's just some like really weird crossover and relationships that like I know it's kooky and out there. Mm -hmm. I don't know. There's just there's a lot of really interesting um, clues that that still have me hanging on to that theory. Do you think it's another situation where like Leanne got involved? Because didn't they say that she should have been there? Mm -hmm. Yes. When that had happened so like do you think she was protecting somebody else who also causes similar issues or do you think like her leaving maybe activated some kind of a similar situation in that home that we weren't totally aware of. News footage seemed to imply, right? When the- mm. When Isabel when, says, if you would just have been where you were supposed to be, you guys remember that? Yeah. Yes, that's what I'm talking about. The it same thing with the Marino. They were talking <clears throat> right to Leanne through the television. Right. Right. And, and laying blame at her feet because yeah. she was supposed to be there. Right. But also interesting to note that, you know, presuming that Dorothy's alive next season and, and she, has, she will be. Um, what if she's in a bed ridden situation like Mrs. Marino? Oh my and God, maybe, yes. that, maybe that'll bring it all back, you know, tying it up together. Yeah. But right. I, I agree that we're not done with the Marinos. There's, there was too much made of it and there, there's just too many unanswered questions around yeah. it. Too, yeah. And too many similarities. And it's just, there's, there's something yeah. about this that, yeah, I mean, and, and we talk about like cyclical, you know, uh, there's them being stuck in a loop. And if Leanne was 
quote unquote supposed to be there, then right. perhaps, you know, she's been with, if it is the same people, perhaps she's been this, this family and that in, in coming to the Turners, that's her way of trying to fix something that she screwed up a long time ago. I don't know. I don't know. It seems so self-serving though, even if she does love Dorothy or want to protect like the whole family as a whole. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The whole family, yeah. yeah. It, so the lesser saints have spoken about Leanne being at the Turners as her going off script. She's not supposed to be there or, or she's not st- supposed to still be there. She was supposed to have moved on to the Marinos or she was supposed to be there in the first place. Um, and if you start messing with timelines or you start stepping in where you're not supposed to step in, that's when bad things start to happen. Well, and that's why I wonder if it's going to end up being something like the video that we posted earlier that this is all happening in Dorothy's head mm-hmm. or reading, that we're getting a very unreliable narrator. Mm-hmm. And I'll, you know, I'll call that to wake up and just a dream and... Yeah. And I mean, the, there were some there were some pretty um, convincing screenshots. I, you know, I mean, I've kind of I remember I kind of maintained so at the end of last season that I didn't think that that corpse was Aunt Josephine. I thought that it was somebody else, and I posited that perhaps it was Ser- that there was Sergio and Sergio's mom in there, aka potentially Dorothy or Julian's mom, if we're going with that theory. So when somebody posted the screenshots of the corpse lined up to the screenshots of Dorothy after that fall, there were some really, really unsettling like hand positions that looked very similar. Um, and the bunch of dress. And so, I mean, I don't think that that theory is dead in the water. I think, you know, and also I noticed this and I, I've been hesitant to mention this, but as the season has gone on, I also kind of like Lauren Ambrose is a small petite person anyway, but I almost felt like she was losing weight and it almost mm. felt like she was wasting away in some regard. And I don't mean that in, in any sort of like derogatory way. I wondered if it was pers- pur- purposeful, if she was supposed to be looking gaunt, if she was supposed to be looking bony. Um, I mean, there were some situations mm. where I was like, wow, she almost looks like skin and bones. Yeah. Well, in this episode, um, so my sister-in-law is a makeup artist, <laughs> I pay, so I pay a lot of attention to makeup on television and film, and did you notice, Alicia, because Aunt, I don't know if you wear makeup or not, but it, <laughs> who knows, but yeah, no, sure. <laughs> um, Alicia, did you notice that Dorothy's makeup was um, very specifically non-makeup? Oh, yeah. You know, so you could see, like, the foundation, the base foundation, yeah, yeah. but... Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. It, it was meant to make her look kind of gaunt and pale and and confused. Like she's been through a lot. Out of it. So I thought that like that also was an interesting case for the body and the wall being Dorothy or some relation to Dorothy and Julian and whatever. I, you know, as opposed to Aunt Josephine. I believe that there there's more than one body in the wall. Oh yeah, I do too. Yeah, uh, I'm not sure. Leanne has got one. The, the way that she booped Dorothy right after she booped, she she booped that that darn horse. She goes up to it and she touches it the same way, and then it disintegrates. And then she does the same thing to Dorothy. And I just thought, well, that could be a clue, or it could also just be a sort of she she did that to the corpse, and and it ash turned to ash, and it made mm. her powerful right that it wasn't that it was something that didn't have control and power over her anymore and then she, therefore she goes to dorothy and she did the same movement because like will you disintegrate power over dorothy now but yeah. she was so she was so nice <laughs> they were gonna be a family yes they could have just ended it this season you everywhere you go <laughs> I find it very sad that all leanne wants is for dorothy to love her yeah. to treat her well to be kind to her to show an interest that's all she wants something else is happening though but yeah i know it's such a uh, and, her her. and you know like i it's nothing i won't forgive you for you know i i will always forgive you dorothy, but dorothy can't accept it. it dorothy just can't accept it yeah the way that she was so manipulative with sean when when she said you know i just don't know why she won't let us love her she, she i don't know why it's so hard for oh, her God. 
Yeah. Man. Just jerk your cock. Yeah. Yeah. When Julian I, said that that he think that like if, that Leon is harmless, I was just like, you have yeah. drunk the Kool-Aid, dude. <laughs> well, and Sean says that. Like, oh, oh. she's innocent now that you're fucking her. <laughs> I know some people weren't sure that Leanne was caused Dorothy to fall like that. But I think it was pretty obvious that she did. She says, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. She grabs Jericho, basically, and Dorothy goes down. But the other clues to that, I think, were little hints in the dialogue. When, Like, for instance, when Jericho was, when she, when Dorothy told Leanne that she could go ahead and tend to Jericho, and but she said, don't let him crawl without me. And Leanne says, don't worry, I won't. I'll push him down. Down. Yep. Mm. And when Julian is talking about having a glass of wine, yeah and Pam says one glass I I won't let you fall yep mm-hmm. yeah yeah there's a I lot of found it somewhat humorous that Dor- that um Leanne thought she was just gonna like Windex away the dead body yeah like <laughs> here I am with my dustpan and Windex and that was a tiny bag. tiny bag too yeah that's right I don't think you would fit a body in that type of a bag also oh, people don't burn that way not to get weird what? but no you would need a done. fire a lot hotter I've emptied a, a bag of um remains oh, wow. yeah and it was very small oh i had a lot it was around that size that was my experience i mean it might not have been burnt that could be dorothy having decayed over many 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 years i mean how many times have we talked about how dorothy feels like she's from a different time period yeah and the the uh acronistic what's the word Acronism. um and acronism mm-hmm. That's what I'm saying. Like, perhaps Dorothy is not Dorothy. Perhaps Dorothy is Dorothy and Julian's mom. Well, you know, it's supposedly foreshadowing of Dorothy's plans of leaving. Right. When Julian says, once we open the bottle, right. you know, then mom's gone. And she's like, it's a fresh start. It's a good thing. Um, mm-hmm. You know, about her leaving, presumably. But yeah, again, that could be a, a nod to. And then, my, you know, Julian says, um, you know, my sister doesn't shuck, is not one to suffer injustice. And Leanne had just said that. So I don't know what that connection is either. Or, I mean, it's just a, such a specific phrase to use. Well, let's use this to go to the title analysis, you know, from Mama. Because, so, you know, on the surface, the title Mama, I think, refers to Jericho saying his first word and it being mm-hmm. Mama. But throughout the episode, um, we have Dorothy and Leanne kind of still fighting for the position of care, primary caretaker of Jericho. Not mama, but, you know, both playing, sharing the role, sharing the role of caretaker. Um, interesting note, when we see the realty sign, part of it, um, the name of the realty company, it's, you know, Green Knight Realtors, but it's, um, you see Sheffield and Associates. And so I looked at Sheffield or Chipperfield. Um it's the name of a township in Washington state. And due to quote some weird thing or some weird union thing on Wikipedia, unquote, um, uh, that township has two mayors, one for the nighttime and one for the daytime. What the hell does that mean? I know. <laughs> Yeah. I'm the nighttime so, mayor? What are we talking about? I, I'm, I'm the nighttime mayor of Chepperfield or Chepfield. Yeah. Uh, it's a union thing. Huh. Take it up. Oh, it's like that, but... paperwork. Okay. No, that makes a lot of sense. It's some odd thing. But yeah. Um, so I just thought that was a neat little way to weave into the, the episode. Uh, one of the themes, Dorothy and Leanne sharing yeah. the role. Um, also, you know, the, the reference to Julian and Dorothy's mother with the wine bottle. You mentioned that there were a lot of biblical references with the numbers. So the phone number for the realty company, 215. Mm-hmm. If you look in the Bible, 215 is the Song of Solomon. And that is another theme that's woven through the episode is Dorothy and Sean's marriage. How it's kind of, well, you know, Sean is no longer in the marital bed. He's on the separated couch. <laughs> um, Dorothy's looking at an old photograph of them in happier times. The photograph that I believe she tries to take with her. You know, Sean talks about how, you know, I, I've known you long enough that I know when you're lying or when you're not telling me something. Dorothy says, you know, I, I saw a look in your eye that I've never seen before that you really believed that I would 
that I was capable of causing harm to Jericho. So, you know, that just kept happening throughout the episode. Oh, oh and, you know, going back to the dinner, you know, when Sean tastes the meal that Dorothy made, you know, it's perfectly balanced. When did you learn to cook this? I, you know, I, I watched you. You made it on the, the night that we moved in. So Song of Solomon, catch for us the foxes, the little foxes that run through the vineyards our vineyards that are in bloom. The vineyards that are in bloom are representational of a relationship that's growing. And then foxes are the little problems that kind of sneak up on you, just the way the cult does. You know, little problems that grow into bigger problems, seemingly inconsequential, but then can become relationship ruiners if you don't correct them immediately or, you know, if you don't keep an eye on them. Um, there's that talk that Dorothy and Sean have right before their couch sex session, you know, where, where Dorothy says, you know, you've changed and, and I was so angry at you for so long. You turned to religion. I turned to anger. I thought that was a really interesting comment because to me that almost bordered on them talking about like how the death of, how they each dealt with the death of Jericho, even though I yeah. know like that wasn't supposed to be what they were talking about to me that right. that I that that was one of the other things that made me wonder if she knew if she had woken up if she, if that yeah. was what they were talking about it and she puts aside her like her affront to that sort of a thing because like she was so dismissive before of Sean and his beliefs or whatever it is that he was doing and this is like the first time we've had a genuine conversation about like any of that at all you know <laughs> I t when she said you turned to did she say faith or religion faith i took that to mean faith in leanne faith in this in this supernatural well and i think that like that I, that I, that's why i felt like maybe there was some double speak going on there or or at least it was ambiguous it's like what is she talking about is she talking about leanne or is she talking about faith in general because in the wake of Jericho's death. And she's just kind of, so even though she hasn't technically woken up, that was just another moment that made me go, hmm. I don't know that she believes in Leanne enough for that to have been what she meant, but it's it's interesting. Exactly, yeah. Faith to me. Because then she would have taken that job and then everybody would have been a happy family. But John didn't turn to religion to cope with Jericho's death. In fact, he was very opposed to religion post Jericho's death when Leanne arrived. Right. And then Leanne kind of turned him into that, turned him well, onto that. Uncle George, yeah, he has that moment in the basement with Uncle George. Mm -hmm. And I really believe that he's believing in miracles that he's witnessing through Leanne and attributing to a higher power. Right, yeah. But it's not so much organized religion as it is organized religion of land right well we may as well move into the park <laughs> you know mm. when the youths still refer to them yeah when she said i'm sorry the moment she said i'm i'm so sorry i was like oh she's gonna leave she's heading out she's leaving it mm -hmm. i knew it was, it. Her goodbye. it was her goodbye yeah i could just tell the last yeah. supper <laughs> and sean is Judas. you betrayed me but i did you yeah i was surprised that sean didn't pick up on that yeah you're being surprised. did you all okay when we see Sean and Dorothy lying post-coital on the post-sex couch. I heard a noise that sounded like a door creaking open. It's a very, very, very quiet squeak. Like a door is being opened slowly. That's interesting. And that could have, if the person in the car was someone that she knew, that could have been, you know, a oh, friend. Who was in the car? Because my two, my two, like, thoughts were either it was Vera or it was her dad. Or I, I, unless you think it was maybe just an Uber. <laughs> Uber, she's so mad at her dad right now. She's yeah. an Uber. Yeah. My thought was Vera. My right. thought was that it was Vera, and Vera was gonna help her disappear. But it could have just been, like I said, it could have just been like an Uber of some kind, and that's what mm -hmm. she told the sequel to do. But so okay, so well, I guess you know. I mean, I think this was pretty obvious, but also deserves to be talked about. When Jericho does say "Mama," you know, he clearly saw Leanne in the doorway because you see Jericho look at the doorway when he says "Mama." It's very, very slight, but he does it. Yeah. Yeah, he doesn't do it the first time. He does it the no, second he time. He did. No, he did. Um, when I watched it the second time, I caught it. He does. Yeah. The first time. The first time he does. He see. He. It's very fleeting. But he looks to the left oh. and, he and he says it. Yeah. But it's so fast. You almost. I missed it. I missed it until I watched it the second time. Mm -hmm. And that this also brings me back to the fact that this is not the first time he called her mama either. This confirmed for me that when they were in the foyer that day between the doors, um. 
you know, to, when Isabel um, had just left and you kind of hear Jericho say mama and he says it to Leanne as she walks away. Right. And, oh, and I, no. Yeah. And I remember yeah. seeing on Reddit going like, did he say mama? And so of course I went back and I listened and I was like, he, he said mama and he said it just as Leanne was walking past and going inside. Oh no. That makes me so sad. I don't know why. I felt for Dorothy. Yeah. So yeah. So he's definitely calling Leanne mama and yeah, he, it was, it was, because at first when I watched it, I almost thought like, is he seeing a ghost? Like what's happening? Yeah. But then, but then, you know, upon talking about it and looking at it again, I, yeah, I think, you know, Leanne was standing there. Now I did wonder if, if Dorothy knew that she was spooked, you know, but a lot of times, like my mind goes to the fact that kids are known to sense and see ghosts and things like that. So my, that's mm. kind of where my head went first, not Leanne, but just mm. that, you know, there was a presence there that the kid could see and sense that Dorothy couldn't. But then, you know, after talking about it more, it made more sense that it would have been Leanne kind of scooching out of the room quickly. At this point, Dorothy is so paranoid about Leanne taking her place, her taking her role mm -hmm. in, in all roles, including mother. I, I 100% believe that Dorothy believes that Jericho is thinking of Leanne as mother, as mama. And I believe that that was at least 50% of her impetus for leaving. Yeah, I think you're right. And I was wondering if the fact that he would be calling Leanne mama, if that's something that Leanne is probably in private. private, you know, not around Dorothy, but like it, when they're alone, when she's alone with Jericho, is is she, is that she would be teach him his mama? Or is it just that like he learns the word and then he calls Leanne that word because he's around her the most, but then <clears throat> He's been strapped to Dorothy's chest for a minute. That's what I said, yeah. Like, yeah. Uh, well, and notice that at breakfast, when Dorothy comes down, the first person that speaks and the first thing that they say, it, it's Leanne. And she says, Jericho, it's your mama. Mama's right. here. So, okay. If it's not Leanne, <laughs> then it could also be the, the ghost of Dorothy. And that's what I thought. If we're looking at either it's all in Dorothy's head or we're seeing different timelines that he's seeing a different Dorothy. Oh man, that gave me chills. Right mm. now, that gave me chills when you said that. If it's... I think it's probably Leanne, but I, but man, that would be really crazy if it was another version of Dorothy. Wow. You know, if Dorothy's in the wall. <laughs> right, exactly, yeah. I'm pretty sure it's Leanne, though, just because of how everything has been, like, you know, the dichotomy of everything and, like, the buildup of the whole yeah. take if, control if, of if my house year, situation yeah. and family. Moment, if the foyer moment hadn't happened, I'd be more inclined to think it it could be one of those things, but because of because he said it that other time, that's why I think it's probably Leanne. Yeah. I mean, the other way would be interesting. Yeah. That would be interesting, too. Oh, the box of them, um, of old carpentry elements, or, you know, not tools, but objects uh, that look like an heirloom box, um, you know, amidst the, the framed photo of Dorothy and Sean and the art books. There's that weird box, that old timey looking box that said HLCM, something like, or HLMC. Um, we were talking about, uh, you know, bodies in the walls and, and in other episodes theorizing about the cult members maybe moving around through the walls, observing. Mm. There are a lot of observational shots in this episode. I just thought it was interesting that um, the M stood for Molly Bolts. Molly, yeah. Molly Bolts. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So another name for those are hollow, hollow wall and hollow door bolts. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. People are used to working with these walls that have spaces between them. It's just for that cool. That's interesting. What did What did you make of all of the different things that they tasted when they were drinking the wine? I thought that was an interesting scene. I thought the the you know uh, Julian says violets, mom's favorite. You know, it's like a memory, and then uh, Dorothy says fireworks. Right? Mm -hmm. old, old, fire, old fireworks? Yeah. That's, I've never heard that one before. What's that's like a salt. Like? Maybe like sulfur or sulfur? like something yeah, like that. Yeah. Uh, a barn in fall? What does Sean say? Yeah. Like, yeah, like hay, like wet hay, maybe something like that. He doesn't say this. Like, you know. Something about a barn. And then Leanne. That's fuck. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> And then everybody has a nice little smooth laugh. We have that creepy live oh. panning shot. So good. One moment yeah. where everything is, is just fine. Not fine, but yeah. like 
in one collective like everyone's on the same page they could have left it there and i would have been like great everyone's fucked and happy <laughs> if you look so we that. got in that scene we got our other reveal um on the julian picture from leanne's notebook mm -hmm. yes oh right yeah hey i did not even pick up on that yeah so that one's check marked and we still have nice. the other two but yeah this was definitely the manifest so of that drawing so that'll be next season maybe do you think uh, overlooking the city and then the pit of hell or what's yeah. the other the one the person walking through fire or a, into a burning building or out of a burning building but i mean i feel pretty certain at this point we're going to see those two so mm -hmm. and and then, talked about the, the wires on one of the jericho drawings like it's a marionette wait, it, what? It, I, see yeah, I swear to you if you go back and look carefully one of the jericho uh, drawings has him with like strings attached wow very, very faint but it's there oh i see the marionettes i see what you're saying yeah there you go. yep i see yeah, it. it's on like the left side yeah on the left Mm -hmm. Yeah, like she's bringing him back to life, like he's Pinocchio. Wow. Or mm. controlling him, or crazy. And that, that's a credit to a redditor. I I wish I could credit them <laughs> by name, but that was from Reddit. The other thing that I was wondering is, um, the wine rack never fell off the wall, right, in the basement? No, we never saw that. So, do you think they're showing things from next season now, or do you think no. that was just like an extra, like little? I hate it when movies and shows do that when they don't show something that's in a trailer. That well, is why would, sad. so then why would you they include that? Is the question. They showed it falling off the wall. That wine, the wine rack in the basement, like comes off the wall. Oh. Mm -hmm. Do you think they're happen. playing the time that way? Like that's some kind of a, like the drawings, like maybe like stuff to come but i don't know why you would film that before and also show it, it, it was, that, in. Was, that was an error do you think it's just well, something they ended up leaving out i don't yeah. think you would but why would you bother putting it in they make everything so specifically they might have had to cut an episode for time they might have decided know. to use it for season four but that's what i that's, mean but that's not typically done it just seems that weird that everything's so meticulous and then that's the thing that or like one of the things that slips by. That would be in the PS to our angry letter to M. Night about the calendar. At least for now. <laughs> so I just wanted to read out loud what Uncle George said about Leanne. I don't know what there is to say about it. It's pretty straightforward, but still. Her story begins in darkness, grows stronger each night. Things are decaying. The house is filled with parasites. That's accurate. Do you smell the rot? I don't know about that. <laughs> what happens next? the end Get him dun, dun, dun. and we circle back to the pacifier under the bed which apparently was also spotted in the bag yeah it's like near the money it's like you know in the with the money and the um, uh, somehow it got from passports the bag to under the well, bed magically it's not, it's not unusual for kids to have multiple binkies that are their favorites because they're always getting lost but she opens up the bag and she says where is it it was just here right so she was specifically referring to that one so that mm -hmm. would indicate that it was sent missing Bacon. and purpose yeah did the one in the bag have a monkey attached to it i i missed that i you know you can't really yeah. see it very well but it's the same one Mm -hmm. They close in on the baby monitor. Right, I saw I noticed that too. Presumably mm -hmm. because the monitor it, that's been, you know, that Dorothy hid in Leanne's room in the dollhouse, that the noise would wake her up. Not that she wouldn't hear the noise anyway in the house. <laughs> right, yeah. And how stupid of Dorothy to go up the stairs. Oh, there were so many parts about it's like get out of the you know. <laughs> Although honestly, she was never going to get out of the house because Leanne knew, you know, so like even if she had done things differently, she still wasn't going to make it out of that house because Leanne knew. Right. She wouldn't have fallen to her. I thought that was really interesting. And of course, it reminded me back in season one of, you know, it being under the bed as well as earlier this season. Mm -hmm. I was going to say this season with the, the woman with the her own binky. Yeah. So that was just another cool parallel. And even just the whole trying to exit with Jericho quietly, like Sean did, you know, in the first or second episode of the very first season. And that was when the alarm went off, right? Right. Yeah. yeah. 
it's been established that Jericho's birthday is June 1st, 1st? 2021, yeah. right? I don't know if it was the first. I think it was something like June 3rd or 4th is what it is. It, so it's oh. the first, apparently. Um, some other evil-eyed Redditor well, found o- it. Well, 0603 is the, is the passcode. And then on right. the calendar, it said one month checkup on the first. So what we assumed was that like 0603 would be, you know, that like the checkup wasn't the very exact day. It was just, you know, within a couple days. Right. But, and I was responding to re- on Reddit to that. But then two other people wrote, commented that <clears throat> somewhere else on a calendar, you see it written Jericho's birthday, 0601. Yeah, I've seen that too. I thought it was the first myself. Huh. Yeah. Which begs the question, why 0603 passcode? And also the numbers he used to get the wine. Yeah, yeah. right. Yeah, that does. Beg so, I just put that into my mind. Yeah. No, hey. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, that, those last moments were so, were filled with so much tension. It was so brilliant the way they escalated that. Oh, God. Termites, and you just, you know what's going to happen. It was awful. And, and Dorothy's speech to Leanne, she just finally comes out and says, I'm not your mother. Mm. I'm not your friend. I am your boss. Mm. And you're just a sad, depressed girl that needs help. Mm. You need to not fall down the stairs. And yeah, throughout the episode, you know, Leanne's keep saying like I vacillating between I won't let anything happen to you and I'm doing this for your own good. I'm doing this for you. This is for you. Also be my mommy. We're on like both ends of it. It's very, it's very interesting. Yeah. I'm very torn. At this point, I don't know. To me, it's like, okay, are we just watching a straightforward story about a woman that, you know, a young woman that's not well? You know what I mean? That's really... Oh, oh no. I think, I think, I think there are supernatural elements, but I think it's just one thing. Right. I mean, that's my, you know, it seems like uh, she's got something going on, but like, all the other weirdness is probably accents to things. Why they chose to do it that way, I don't know. Yeah. It works very well, but it's... It's, it's, it's around fixation on Dorothy. Hmm. And, and Dorothy's fixation on Jericho. A long time coming. And these Faustian bargains that the Turners keep making with Leanne. Yeah, yeah. And that's kind of it in a nutshell, right? That's it, yeah. Like a love you- triangle. Do you think, do you think, <clears throat> you think now that, um, like, they're teaching Jericho to crawl, and things like that, like, do you think Dorothy's, like, coming away from using him as, like, more of a symbol? Oh, uh, like an accessory? Like, like she has been up until, I guess, very recently? Like, do you think she's trying to, like, not show Leanne, but, like, maybe, like, having work <laughs> taken away from her? Like, maybe that's, like, showing Just- her- what Leanne did to her. What's really her, important? I'm trying to figure yeah. out how to say it, but yeah, like, yeah, yeah, right. She's forced into a situation where she has to bond with him. Right, exactly, and, and it's she's slipping. Yeah, and now that's slipping away too, or seeming to. Well, yeah. I mean, mm. what can you do with all of your limbs in plaster? Mm, I mean, we'll that's... see. So, so, do we think that she's going to be paralyzed and they're going to stick with it? Do we think she's going to be? dead and get resurrected by Leanne? Do we think that she is going to get healed by Uncle George so she can walk again? What do you guys think is going to happen? All of from, mm, Yeah, right. All of, <laughs> all of it. <laughs> from the way that things have been, I can see them like leaning into the grin and probably having her be paralyzed, at least for an episode or two, if not indefinitely. Mm-hmm. But Leanne has abilities. Right. And if that's my mother and I love her or I want her to be whatever for me, like everything for me, I'm going yeah. to do whatever. Well, that's the thing. She's running. saying repeatedly, I wouldn't hurt you. Mm. I wouldn't hurt Dorothy. I wouldn't mm. hurt her. How could she you hurt her? But like, um, you just did. He doesn't exactly, yeah, like that, that exchange, she doesn't exactly promise not to hurt her. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know, hurt could mean a bunch of things right and that's that i'm sure that's certainly hurt he didn't say kill but you know well and we dorothy have to keep t- things together dorothy attempting to leave her mm. and and dorothy flat out saying i'm not your mother i'm nothing to you other than your boss and you know like you get away from me i'm trying mm. to get away from you um <laughs> along with having lied to her mm-hmm. and trying to run um liam's other words 
you know, I will not suffer injustice. Exactly. That's a very good point. I didn't put that together till just now. So it's like that followed by I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. And then she knows Dorothy's so determined that like she'll just keep doing that probably. I mean, you know, you can only get her. Yeah, she knew that like as long as Dorothy was mobile. So I'm inclined to believe she'll be in the chair or in in the bed or yeah. Yeah. At least for a while. That's such a good point, Aunt. Yes. I because I, I was going to say that I'm getting, you know, heavy misery, whatever happened to Baby Jane vibes for next season. Um, mm-hmm. That that makes such, that that adds so much more meaning to that kind of scenario for next season. Yes. And then on top of that, it's like, I'm here to take care of Jericho, but now like, I also <laughs> can take <laughs> care of you. Mm-hmm. And now you owe me, maybe, or yes. You know, like I tried and to take care. I tried to take care of you my way by trying to give you that job, which I assumed she would have gotten. But now, now I have to do it like my other way. <laughs> yeah, the easy way or the hard way. All exactly. the way That's about yeah, exactly. Yes. What a season. What a season. What an ending. Mm-hmm. Like I said, not okay. Mm. <laughs> In the best way. Oh, for sure. It was brilliant. Yeah, it absolutely was. It was It was just, it was top notch. Mm-hmm. Well, guys, I guess that brings us to our final episode recap of season three. Right. We've still got next season. Yes, we do. So we can rest assured that we'll continue with that. But in the meantime, there's so much stuff still to talk about. Oh, for sure. You know, there's lots of other things we've been wanting to do that we haven't had time to do because it's been in season. And so I know we're going to try and tackle some of those things. So yeah. hopefully you guys will stick with us and and um, keep visiting back and watch some of, you know, I'm sure we'll tackle different theories, jump down some mm-hmm. rabbit holes, maybe get around to doing those funny videos we've been promising for a while. Yeah. Um, you know, and some other cool stuff here and there. So, and then of course, transitioning into also adding some other shows to our roster. So lots of exciting things coming up. Yes, much to discuss. All right. Well, wrapping up season three. Mm-hmm. Okay. One word. How would, what would one word you use to describe season three? Excellent. Bonkers. <laughs> If I didn't choose a phrase, I'd be like, what the fuck? Because <laughs> I felt like I was saying that every episode. It was so, I would say like musical. Yeah. I keep thinking yeah. magnificent. I don't know why. It's not a word I normally use, but that's just, for whatever reason. I just keep thinking that. Just like the consistent like buildups of like, you know, like mm. they show you this one thing and then they have like the slow payoff. <laughs> <laughs> they had the, like they played so well with tension maybe that's the word maybe tension is the word for this season yeah. wrapped that was always very wrapped yeah up. every yeah. Yeah. the last two i don't think i sat down yeah mm-hmm. <laughs> i i kept trying to think of a way to say like speeding train mm-hmm. um that's what it felt like mm-hmm. as on this train it just kept going and going faster and faster mm-hmm. such a build up to such an amazing end. something's coming that's gonna you know just send everything off the rails but yeah careening off a cliff well much, much applause and gratitude towards the cast crew and production team writers directors all of you if anybody's listening we just we're beside ourselves with enjoyment through the whole this is, it's the best show on television really? or not on television how do we or say it's the best, the best show streaming right there you go <laughs> nothing on television is better than it either <laughs> not in my opinion currently all right guys well we will be back soon with more content thank you so much for visiting listening commenting watching we hope you guys really enjoyed the season and our and our deep dives and um stay tuned yeah all right so for alicia liz and Ant, this is servant decoded and we'll see you soon bye, bye. bye.